Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for watching today. Today, uh, day three, and we're going on the um, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller. And the next step, the next is part two. There's four stages, but today we're going to talk about stage one is think like a millionaire real estate agent. So in this uh, today, we're going to talk about nine things nine ways that Gary Keller says millionaire real estate agents think. So I'm going to go one by one through these, kind of put my my take, of course, my thoughts, and my interpretation of these on there. Because again, if you haven't gotten the book, get the book. Great book. So number one uh, is know your why, the, the why you're working, why you want to be a real estate agent, why you love it, why you're in it. Did you just start now? Why you got into it? If you've been in it for years, why you've been in it for many years? But the one thing that that I made a note of is that if you or stop working when you hit that level of money that you want to make for a month, a year, the, your career, then you got to think of what's the why? Are you in it for the money? Are you in it because you love it? Because you're in it because you want to help people? So a millionaire real estate agents think of what's their why and always remember that why they're doing this, why they work every day. Do you work for your family? Do you work for security? Do you work for retirement? Work for vacations? Uh, pay off debts? Uh, pay off, uh, help pay for college for your children? Where's your why? So that's not just in any just millionaire real estate agents. That's really this why of why we do the things we do, why we pick the, the paths we want to we take in success in business, that's very important. So you know your why and why you picked real estate and remind yourself of it daily or as often as possible. Um, two, uh, big goals and big models. So real, millionaire real estate agents or successful real estate agents have big goals. Uh, I like to call them BHAGs or big audacious uh, goals. And that is something that you just have big goals. And those to me are final goals, like where you want to end up uh, you know, with retirement money or uh, vacations or pay off debt, everything I just said. But have those big goals. But you always got to remember you have to have those daily goals too. Those daily goals, like kind of like you need, you've heard that saying, uh, you know, four base hits equals a home run. So you have to have those little goals to get to those big goals too. So have big goals and have a big model, like what your your growth is going to be. Is your growth, and, and a lot of this book is about building teams and building, uh, having assistance and having people help you with your business. That's definitely a good goal to have if that's the way you want. But there's a lot of agents too, and that's why I'm putting my take on this book, is a lot of agents just want to be uh, – one man or one woman shop. I want to do everything myself. You know, it's there's so many people out there that are successful people in sales and in real estate that are just one person shops, but that's their choice. That's what they want to do. They want to control everything around us and not have to rely on other people. But I'm going to talk a little bit about that too when, when hiring people and getting help and, and, and having standards. We're going to go over that. But again, have big goals. And when you have big goals, you got to decide if you need a big model to have that goal. Do you need is your goal obtainable with just yourself? If not, you're going to have to create the model and create or and, and start using some of these things that we're going to talk about in in how to build a model or a bigger business with more people, with assistants, with buyers, agents, sellers, agents, uh, uh, and people around you. Uh, that could help you get to those goals. Number three, possibilities. Any successful person and millionaire real estate agent think about the, the, the possibility of, of real estate. That's why I love real estate. I hope you do too. So one thing is that the possibilities of everything that you can accomplish in this business, you could really obtain any, let's say, financial goal that you want in real estate. I there. Because, you know why? Because we see people do it, and there's a lot of agents doing it across the country, across the world. 
people are in real estate or realtors. Well, realtors in the United States, not too sure what, <laughs> what if there's realtors outside the United States or, but real estate agents, people that are selling, but the, the sky is the limit and the possibilities are endless of what you want to do because I see people doing it that's already being done. So I kind of uh, connect that with two. If you've seen people do it before and they're doing it right now, often, and those people have the same tools, uh, education, the same technology, uh, there's no realtor that has a technology that you don't have. There's no realtor that has a better education other than maybe some years of experience that you don't have. Uh, again, this is my opinion. There's some people that don't agree with this, but I, I'd say to all new agents, the only thing a, a agent has that has been in business longer, has a little bit of experience to handle people and has a past fear of influence or past fear of business that hopefully they're, they're, they're going to, to get referrals. But I see agents today that have been in the business 30 years that have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of transactions in, 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 in their past and have no business today. So they're not tapping into why they, they, you know, all of those advantages of that, why they've been in business for 30 years and have no business today. They just didn't tap into it or they didn't want to. So uh, uh, an agent that has been in the business 30 years that has no business today is, this, is, is almost at a disadvantage than an agent that just is brand new and is gung-ho and just get their licenses and wants to get out there and work. So anybody watching this, we've seen it. We've seen agents that have been in the business one year and, and do very well. And agents have been in the business 20 years. So years in business doesn't equal success. So you, you can really be successful in real estate. The possibilities are pretty much endless in, in our industry there. Number four, action is taking action. Any millionaire real estate agent, successful real estate agent takes action every day. They, they, have, they, do, they complete their tasks. They do the plan. They stick with the model. They, they're action, action, action. They're not passive about anything in their business. They're taking action all of the time. So number four, action is uh, one of the nine things a way uh, a millionaire real estate agent thinks. Uh, five, fearless. Now, fearless is just the one main fear that I feel any successful person has or millionaire real estate agent has is the uh, not being fearful of obtaining their goal. Fear, that's the only thing they're fear of, that they won't obtain their goal. But they're fearless about it because they know they're going to get there. It's kind of like you, you put your mind at ease and you know, I'm going to follow these steps. I'm going to put the plan in place. I'm going to do these tasks every day and I'm going to get to my goal. You, you get to my daily goals, my yearly goals, because if you just do the tasks, put your plan in place, follow the rules of, of success, like we said yesterday, is that there's follow the path of the successful agents. This is not rocket science. Don't reinvent the wheel. If you read this book or read other real estate books of successful real estate agents, it's, there is a blueprint there of exactly what they did. There's no secret. There are no secrets out there of how you can do this. It's all out there in black and white and videos on YouTube, uh, real estate coaches. There's this. You just got to put the plan in place. Take action and do the steps that you want you're, you're comfortable doing. Number six, progress is making progress, continually make progress. And if you don't make progress, you take a step back for a day, you don't get all the things you want to accomplish, you get a busy day and you don't make those prospecting calls or that month you don't hit your uh, listing goals or sales goals, you know that you're moving in the right direction. I kind of, and I've said this in many videos in the past, as that's kind of like when you're, you're trying to be healthy and you want to, if you want to lose weight or be healthy, if you have one bad day uh, and, or there's one month or uh, a few months or that you, you don't lose weight, that you want to lose weight, you don't give up. So same with real estate, same with success, same with this is that always be making progress and you just got to decide that 
what that progress is and where you you gauge that. Is it monthly? Is it yearly? Uh, making sure that you're always growing, especially now. Uh, I've been really coaching agents that because some of them are getting a little stressed because of the situation with uh, COVID and and buyers and sellers have slowed down a little bit with some buyer sellers, but they're picking up now. Some haven't picked up yet. Some are overloaded with business. Is that, you know, just if you're not where at the level you where you want back from when this started in March, you're going to get there. It always happens. It's your business is going to go ups and downs. Your goal is every day to work hard so you can straighten that line out so your business is not up and down. So remember, keep working and being uh, making progress uh, there. Seven, be competitive. Now, successful people are competitive. That's simple as that. Are they competitive with themselves? Are they competitive with their competitors? Are they comparing themselves to other realtors? That's why sometimes I, I feel uh, uh, weird about telling agents the average number of sales because some people just want to be just better than average. You want to be make your level. So if you want to be better than average in real estate, sell six houses a year, seven houses a year. That's better than average. But that's not going to be success. That might not be the success that you want. So just being better than average is not always you. So you want to be competitive either with yourself and, and your daily, weekly, monthly goals, your sales goals, be competitive with your competitors, the other agents. There's plenty of them out there to be competitive with. Uh, it's always great. I hear stories weekly from our agents that is great, especially the ones I coach when they win a listing appointment or they earn a listing appointment or earn a new listing because they were up against their competition and they had listed, uh, uh, they were interviewing other agents. It's beautiful to hear those stories when you earn it. You didn't win it. It's not like a lottery. I always explain it to agents. Wow, you like you you won the, the listing. You didn't win it. You earned it. You you beat your competition. So be competitive. Uh, eight. Have standards. Standards. A standard to of yourself. Standard of service. Because sometimes when you get really busy uh, prospecting or new buyers and new sellers. I see it. Uh, I've seen it many times over many years is that sometimes the level of service could fluctuate when you get busy. So make sure when you start getting busy, either if you've been busy before or you're a new agent, you're like, wow, cause I love those helping those agents when, when they first get actually very busy, like, wow, I got three buyers and Two listing appointments this week, and I, I and I got multiple offers on this. I'm working on the multiple offers all day long, and I don't. I got buyers that want to go see houses tonight, but I got multiple offers working tonight. And I got three listing appointments uh, this week, and I got to prepare for them. And I get those texts or I see those emails from agents that midnight, one o'clock in the morning, they're working on paperwork uh, because all day they were busy. That's great, but make sure you always keep a standard of service because when you get busy sometimes I equate it to like uh, if you ever were a server at a restaurant or been at a restaurant when the servers have too many tables now remember I always remind agents of this is that remember the experience someone has buying or selling a house with you is right then and there so the, your your future of referrals from those people depend upon what you do with them now so if you get busy and you don't, you're not calling them back, you're not uh, scheduling showings when it's convenient for them or not updating your sellers uh, of, of showings and, and keeping them updated what's happening with feedback. Remember, uh, the great thing about success is getting busy and handling that. And, and I see, I could see it in my agent's eyes and or in their voice when I'm not seeing them face to face, how excited they get when they get to the point where I got several buyers and I got a couple of listings and they're all selling fast. It's just great. But make sure that level of service standard is there uh, so you get those referrals. And then nine last today is have purpose, uh, have a value proposition for your business. So your value proposition, uh, any successful real estate agent has, uh, has a very simple, not really simple, but very clear value proposition for their clients. So what makes them successful, why they should use you. So a value proposition is something could be 
several pages of all of the different services, like a listing presentation is kind of a value proposition. As this is my value, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, this is my value, all of these things. But make sure that's clear and that you know it. And maybe in, in you could condense that into uh, uh, a less than minute conversation if you're, you know, you run into someone. So I tell all of our agents and tell any agent, I have a value proposition like a, obviously you have a listing presentation, you might have a buyer presentation of all this stuff, but also condense it to almost down to your qualities of your, your culture of why someone should use you as their agent. Because you might get just that one minute, like kind of like that elevator pitch type mentality with someone that you run into or talk to on the phone that you could explain all this without an hour long presentation of all the things you're going to do. So, and try to stay away from the general, like, well, I'm, I'm dependable, I'm honest, I'm this. I mean, everybody knows that, and, and, and if they're even talking to you, they know that you, they, they feel comfortable doing business with you. But ha make yourself a little bit different. Have all those general things that I'm dependable and honest and an expert in the market and, and going to help you and, and be available to you. All those things that give you value to why someone should you do business with you, but be clear on it so you're clear on what you like to say, what you like to show people, why you got to sell them and why they should use you over another real estate agent, uh, realtor. So uh, a millionaire uh, real estate agents have a clear value proposition and live it, breathe it every day and can easily explain that to a, a potential buyer or seller quickly and then has presentations to back it up when you get the time to show it to them. So, so that's it for today. Those nine things, nine ways uh, millionaire real estate agents think. And tomorrow we're going to keep on going down this. Please get the book if you, if you didn't get it yet. Uh, and if you want to go over any of these things one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I'm happy to do so. Happy to kind of show you how to implement these things into your life. Come up with a, uh, a business plan and get your model of being a successful real estate agent together. Uh, whenever you have time. So that's it. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow on Thursday. Bye-bye.